on the hunt for a small wave surfboard to make the most of the summer waves, well here's 10 boards to consider adding to your quiver. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke for Travel here, or welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're going to be talking about small wave surfboards. Uh, there's plenty of boards out there in reviews for performance boards that you can do airs on, get barreled on, all that kind of thing. Uh, but for the most of us, 90% of the waves we're surfing are going to be on the smaller end of the spectrum, uh, especially coming into the summer months, those smaller grovelly days. Uh, you'll need something with a little bit more punch to get you through those flatter sections and make the most of the conditions at hand. Uh, so today I'm going to be running through 10 epic small wave surfboards you should consider adding to your quiver, as well as some tips and advice for picking the best small wave surfboard for you. So yeah, let's jump straight in. So first things first, I'm going to talk through the four key characteristics to an epic small wave surfboard. Uh, the first of which is a rocker, or more importantly, a slightly flatter rocker. So this is the curve between the nose and the tail. And when the board has got a slightly flatter rocker, it's gonna be a little bit easier to paddle. It's gonna coast through those kind of flatter dead sections a little bit easier. And it's just gonna add that little bit of extra paddle power to your smaller wave performance. Um, and now along the side of the rocker is higher volume as well. A little bit of extra foam is gonna go a long way, especially for small wave surfboards, where the wave lacks that little bit of extra punch and you need a little bit of extra float underneath you to really make the most of the waves at hand. Uh, moving alongside from a volume is also the wide point of the board. On a small wave surfboard, generally you want the wide point of the board slightly further forward off center. So a little bit of extra volume under the chest. Again, this is gonna add to your paddle power, the stability of the board. It's also gonna carry the speed through those dead sections a little bit better as well. Now the final point is also length. Uh, things like long boards and mid lengths are epic small wave surfboards because of that extra length. Again, like the other characteristics, it's gonna to add to the paddle power of the board, you're gonna catch more waves, and it's just gonna plane through those dead sections that little bit easier. That being said though, some of the boards that we're gonna chat through, such as fishes, go for small and fat, so you don't necessarily need a lot of extra length to take full advantage of their small wave capabilities. Now that we've run through those characteristics, here's 10 boards you should consider adding to the quiver. The first board on my list is the Evil Twin by Lost Mayhem Surfboards. Uh, now I picked up one of these recently from my local surf shop and was absolutely blown away by the small wave performance of this board. I've got a 510 which comes in at 34 liters and ride it with an upright pivot set of twins and it absolutely blasts through the small waves. It's super fun, maneuverable, plenty of performance packed in there and it's really lively and fun underfoot. Uh, it comes in a full range of sizes, so you can ride it as a single fin if you want, two plus one, but I really like mine as a 20. Uh, if you do decide you want to go for that mid-length option in it, it's really good as a single fin as well. But for me, the 510 with the twin fin setup, great small wave surfboard. Number two on the list is the Mini Twin 2 by DHD Surfboards. Uh, now this is the second installment of the Mini Twin. Uh, the original was a much more performance-based fish, uh, but the Mini Twin 2 definitely pumps in a little bit of extra volume, moves that wide point a little bit further forward, and has a lot more volume running through the nose as well. The result is great paddle power and small wave performance. Uh, I would ride this board with a more kind of retro keel style fin in it. Uh, it gives you a lot more drive, and it's gonna definitely help in those small wave conditions. Next up on the list is another one of my personal favorite boards, and that is the Seaside by Firewire. Uh, now, this is one of my favorite boards of all time. I absolutely love it. In fact, I've just re-bought another one to add to the quiver again. Uh, strapping the quad fin system is gonna give you lots of speed, plenty of float, that wide point, a lot of volume under the chest to make it really easy to paddle into waves, and it's gonna handle those small summer conditions really well. Uh, the great thing about this board as well is it uh, suits a huge variety of surfers um, and will handle everything from kind of waist high beach breaks right through to reeling reefs. So yeah, Firewire Seaside, another epic small wave surfboard. When it comes to performance grovelers, the Puddle Jumper HP by Lost Surfboards is another personal favorite of mine and is a great board for all conditions up to about head high. Uh, it gives you the option of riding as a thruster or a quad. A lot of people like theirs as a quad, but I actually preferred mine as a thruster to mix up the fin configuration and find out what works for you. Again, this is another board that packs in a lot of volume in a small stature and is a great board for progressing from kind of mini miles into your first shortboard as well. But it's also an all round small wave surfboard. We're back on the twin fins again with the Go Fish by Firewire Surfboards. Uh, now this is one of the first twin fin boards that I really kind of got to grips with and really enjoyed. Um, another board model with plenty of volume under the chest. It's a great first time fish board for a lot of people. Um, the Machado heels are my go-to fin in this board. 
heaps of drive but plenty of release and anything up to kind of head or even head and a half works great. But yeah, for that reason as well, great small wave surfboard. Next up is Mick Fanning's Performance Small Wave Board, the DHD Phoenix. Um, now again, this packs a lot of volume into a small package, uh, so this is a great board for kind of bigger guys looking for that little bit of extra volume underneath you, or a kind of short boarder looking to get that little bit of extra volume in a shorter package for summer fun. Uh, strap in a twinny with a trailer for up to head high waves and then above head high you can just chuck in your thrusters for a little bit more performance but yeah if you're looking for that small wave surfboard experience twin with the trailer is going to maximize the fun on this board another favorite from my own personal quiver here with the hipto crypto twin by hayden shapes and now uh, this is the follow-up to the ever popular hipto crypto uh, but this time it's a twin fin fish um, it's a really good first time fish or twin fin board for people progressing from the hipto crypto or looking to get into that style of surfboard for the first time but it's also going to suit more experienced surfers as well uh, strapping a set of keel fins for heaps of drive and speed it's got a lot of small wave performance packed into here um, and it's also going to handle a huge variety of waves well up to head and half but yeah, with that drivey twin fin setup, you're gonna make the most of those smaller summer conditions. Now, a really good option for the more experienced surfer is the McTavish Butterball. Uh, this is based on the Mini Simmons design, comes with a quad fin setup, so plenty of speed in those smaller dead sections. That flatter rocker is gonna give you heaps of paddle power, and in terms of small wave performance, the Butterball is gonna be hard to beat. Now I've also got to include one of the most versatile boards in my personal quiver, which is the Dominator 2 by Firewire. And uh, now this board works in a huge variety of conditions from waist high right through to head and half, and is therefore an epic small wave surfboard as well. Plenty of volume under the chest, lots of paddle power, but lots of performance packed in there as well. Squash tail offers lots of release, even with the quad fin setup. Uh, you can ride it as a quad or a thruster. Personally, I get a lot more speed and drive and fun out of the quad fin. But yeah, mix it around and see which works best for you. But yeah, the Firewire Dominator 2, another epic small wave surfboard. And number 10 on my list is a little bit of a cheat entry and I'm gonna just say mid-length surfboards. So by mid-length surfboards, I mean anything from about 6.8 through to 7.8 in the performance mid-length category. So we're talking things like the Cape Collective Midway, the Channel Island CI Mid and the Firewire Seaside and Beyond all awesome mid-length surfboards. Um, the little bit of extra length, flatter rocker is gonna give you lots of paddle power, heaps of waves, and just loads of small wave summer fun. So yeah, mid-length surfboards, the final entry to my small wave surfboard guide. And there you have it guys, that's my full small wave surfboard guide and 10 awesome boards to consider adding to your quiver for heaps of summer fun. Now if you'd like to find out more info on my small wave summer boards, check out the link in the description below for my full blog guide. And of course, check out the rest of my YouTube channel for heaps of surfboard guides, reviews, and more. That's it for this week, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.